If I come in and just kind of lightly touch in a couple of spots, it puts a little bit of texture in there. So it looks like you got craters. It doesn't look flat anymore. If I wipe the brush off now and I hold it really flat, don't go in with the end. If I hold it really flat and I just lightly tap it a little bit, it softens it in. Now, a lot of times my students will have trouble with that and they get too much blue in there. If that happens, it's a simple fix. Swish the blue out of your brush and your thinner. Take a little more white and you can put a little bit of white back in there if it needs it. It's an easy adjustment. Painting is nothing more than a series of adjustments. You're always putting one value against the next, uh, light against dark, hard edges against soft edges. It's a balancing act. So if you make what you think is a mistake, it's easy to correct nine times out of 10. Okay, I'm gonna move forward now and start putting some of these fir trees in. You'll notice they're heavily laden with snow. We've gotta base them in darkly first and get them in there before we can lay the snow on them. So I'm gonna show you how I do those. And again, these are gonna be kind of time consuming. So once I've shown you how to do this, I'll put a couple on my canvas and I'm gonna to have to skip out and finish some of these off for you. But I'm gonna use the detail script liner, same brush I just used. I want a dark value. I don't necessarily want it black but I want something that's a first cousin to black. So I'm gonna take black, a little bit of blue. Everything in this painting is kind of darkish as far as the elements and the trees and whatnot. Obviously the snow and the moon are lighter, but anything that's gonna be uh, silhouetted with that moonlight is gonna be dark, it's nighttime. Now see, I, I take this paint and I thin it down quite generously and I roll that brush right full. This holds a lot more paint than that other liner that I used for these trees. This is the detail script liner. This was the liner. Two different brushes, two different purposes. So if I take this, I basically just kind of draw down a trunk line and I dab. I'm kind of dabbing from the middle of the trunk line out in just a little jittery fashion. They're just rough branches and needly branches hanging out on either side. It's actually pretty easily, easily done. So just let it taper a little wider as you come down. I'm gonna bring these right down off my tape where my tape line is taped off here. Here's a couple of things that you shouldn't do. A lot of times in my class, I see students just do the obvious and they just basically kind of draw lines across. That's great if you're drawing a ladder, but we don't want any ladders. The other thing is sometimes they get too wide too soon. They get really wide at the top and then they lose control of it and they start getting too wide and it starts taking on the shape of a pyramid. You don't want that either. Keep it nice and spindly. I'm gonna go back to this brush. It's the one I used earlier. And see, it gives me color harmony and continuity. I'm not using a, mixing up a different color that I don't quite match. This will match perfectly. And I didn't put base coat all the way down the bottom. I didn't need to. So see, I left that area kind of dry and then I mingle it up into the base coat so they kind of literally melt together. No pun intended since that's snow. But see, it gives us that nice glow of moonlight on the hill. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Okay, a couple more things we got to do here. I need to put in some uh, cast shadows from the trees. Cast shadows are always darker than form shadows. This is what's known as a form shadow. It shows the shape of something. So I need something a little darker than what that is. So I can just pull from these colors I have on my palette. I can take my sky color, add a little bit of that darker value black and blue gray that I had, add a little more blue. And basically I'm just gonna do the trees upside down. If the light is coming from this way, probably the shadow over the hill is gonna spill this way off that tree. They tend to get a little flatter as they come farther from the source. So you have to look at it logically. Yours is gonna be different. Depends on where you laid out your trees. See the angle here is probably going to be about here. This one will be a little more vertical. And I'm paying attention to the heights. The longer, taller tree will cast the longer shadow. And then I simply just do the tree upside down. 